Oh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a interesting blog. I was going to be outside all day today doing yard work and running around doing this, but it's very cold out there today. It's kind of the wind's kind of raw, so I thought, why not today make a video review on on an HP Compact Pro 6200 small form factor. This PC has a very well reputation, in my opinion, of quality. It's actually one of the one of the last best PCs that HP made before all going or all going to heck in a handbasket. And and what's really nice about them is they're they're no thrills PCs. They don't, they're not fancy, they're, they're not all flashy looking. The only thing that, that's really nice about them is the motherboards that are on, that the system features, you can put up to 32 gigs of RAM on this system. So that's a nice feature. Because most typical computers from that are the cheaper models. You can only put about 16 gigs of RAM, but this one you can go 32 gigs. So it's not classified as a workstation, but I'm actually it'd be kind of interesting to max it out 32 gigs. And in this computer, I put a solid state drive in here because I originally I was going to sell to a customer, but funny thing was it was flaking out. In front of him, but now that I got it back, it seems to be working just fine. I only have four gigs of RAM in here at the moment, and that's what it originally came with when I bought this machine. And no, I did not buy it brand new. I bought this from a, a school that was selling them. At the time, it was only, only about sixty. I think it was only fifty dollars a piece. <laughs> this one features a core Intel Core i5. And this, this one is clocked at. Let's see here. I admit I'm not always on top of my game when it comes to. It's Core i5. 2400 CPU clocked at 3.10 gigahertz. Oh, there goes a state trooper. Nope, that was Mantua County Police. So that, that's the kind of the Sandy Bridge, as they call it, style processor. And actually, you can hyper thread with this series of computers, which I have a different model here that I did hyper-threading with. So, so if you wanted to run VMware, this computer is more than capable of, of doing that, in my opinion. And actually, it handles itself quite well for that application. Or if you want to use it for office work, like typing documents and doing spreadsheets and PowerPoint and stuff like that. It has plenty of power for that application as well. It's not the computer itself that lags. It's just what really ruined it was when you you put Windows 10 on here. Or Windows 10 ruins a lot of these computers software wide there either. And actually the computer is a fairly quiet computer running. It's they're not that noisy. And then, unfortunately, the 6200, you only get USB 2.0s. But what's nice is you got four USB 2.0s in the front. So if you wanted to run four flash drives or charge your phone or, or plug in printers or whatever, or external hard drives, you can do that. Plus, you got two headphone ports in the front. So if you want to plug your headphones in, listen to music or something, or 
you wanted to use a a microphone for Skype, you could also do that. So your micro, some of those headphone microphone sets, you got two different sets of wires coming off there with two different connectors. This was designed, and the, the, the real interesting thing was if you ran Windows 7 on it at the time, the backwards compatibility of those headphone slash microphone ports. So in the microphone port, you could actually get away with plugging in two mic or heads or sets of headphones and supposedly still getting, and both sides are stereo or you, and the sound was in stereo. It wasn't mono. Because even when I was in college, they had these. And these are decent computers. In my honest opinion, even though that they weren't, they were the low end of the business machines, but the ultimate, or the, yeah, this was the low end of the HP's Compact business. The next one up would be Elite, which would be like 8,081, 82, 83s. And then the Z workstation would be the workstation, which would that'd be the ultimate of the business class. But we'll get into that another time. But so here. What's interesting is you typically got you got a, okay. Let me rephrase that so I don't make a nitwit out of myself. What's really nice is if you wanted to put like a multi card reader slot in, you have an extra port on the motherboard for inserting one. And you got a blank on the front here. You can put underneath the CD-ROM drive. Or that outfit. And as far as the costs of those things, I think you can get them for about fifty dollars. I haven't priced one in a long time. Because I got a couple of them here that I could put in here if I decide to keep this as an ultimate PC, but we'll wait and see. I'm not a hundred percent sure. What I'm going to do with this yet. But it is. And then you also have eight USB ports in the back. So you got more than an, more than enough. In my honest opinion. Plus you got your. This, this computer has onboard. Intel HD graphics. This motherboard also features RAID. Configuration so you can actually run. I think if I'd have to look inside how many SATA ports are currently on. On this machine, but. This is currently, so this was manufactured 216 of 2012. So, eight years old, an eight year old computer, but it's got so. We'll go ahead and take you and give you an idea of what. So here you could put you got four SATA ports here, so you could actually you could put a, a three hard drive read in the system. So, so let's take a look. So over here we got various connectors that you can you can put different 
different options and extra fans if you wanted to. Or and that's your BIOS res BIOS or CMOS reset switch. And then here you got PCI Express, PCI Express X, and okay, that I I didn't quite say that correctly, but here, if you wanted to put a typical network card, you could do that. I do have a few extra graphics, or not graphics, uh, this, would, this one over over here you'd use as graphics. And later on in the video, I will look it up. Obviously, it's made in China. But, and then you have your two PCI Express exports, is, I think that's I will look it up later and we'll verify that but then you also got a couple of heat sinks those are your integrated ports built in this computer also does feature display port so you could actually take a vga monitor and a display port monitor and you can actually have side by side set up with Having dual display monitor, I tried it. It works. There's no lag in performance. So, and what's really nice about so this is what the front looks like. What's nice is you can lift this up, and if you want to take the front cover off, you got these three tabs. I have not cleaned this in a long time. So that's you know what's nice is they give you extra screws here so you can put another hard drive in there if you wanted to or whatever the case may be or another CD drive or I've even seen these using as a raid configuration but except the drives didn't fit in the top so the person I knew that did this they had like a tray on top that they custom made for the hard drives to sit in so and here's the cooling fan heat sink I really should clean it there you go so we'll put this back on As you can tell, I really haven't. And a DVD drive actually works on here. And that is a rewritable. And I've used that, and it works for burning DVDs and CDs and stuff like that. So if you want to remove it, you just press the green tab and you just slide it back. And it just pops out almost instantaneously. But we don't want to do that, so we're going to put that back in. So, in it's it's almost a tools assembly for removing the case. And so, if you wanted, this flips up, so you can actually remove those blanks. But theoretically, you actually want to leave those in there because it's how this case works is the air gets pulled, sucked in through the front, and it gets sucked through the fan to the heat sink, and then you have air being sucked in from the outside and it circulates out the back. So that's that's also features serial on here, so if you in some applications, like if you're hooked up to a 3-count switch or something, or an HP switch, you could open a serial command using that, using PuTTY. This also features gigabit Ethernet connection. And if you're hooked up to a gigabit switch or gigabit router, your speeds... Your network speeds do not actually lag too badly, but I don't really... I'm not hooked up to 
a gigabit switch at the moment. I only have a mega, 100 megabit switch. So I can't really test that theory. But it is something, something to keep in consideration that you can do. So basically, we're not going to demonstrate every little nit nitpicking thing about this machine, but I have to say I am impressed with the quality. Overall, it's the memory. If you do buy memory for it, stick with the ten six hundreds. No, I think when I go online and get the schematic for it, we'll find out actually exactly what. So what's nice about these are if you wanted to stand it up on its side, you could do that. So we're going to show you what the, the back consists of here. So you got VGA, typical. As UXW Bill would refer to as PCs, it's a real PC because you got PS2 ports on it. <laughs> And the serial. So we got. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I thought there's eight on the back. There's only there's only six USB ports, and those are all 2.0. And here, you got audio in, which is blue. Then you got audio out, which is green, and that's that's just analog. That's not digital. Then you get your display port. So. It's not the most fanciest computer in the world, but in cases there's some people that that wanted at the time to be able to use parallel printer ports. So there's an adapter that you can put in here that you would run that to. There's a spot on the motherboard that you'd plug in the. And I do have a couple of those here, but. I don't use print parallel print ports or parallel ports anymore. I haven't used those probably in like the last 10 years or had any printers that use that. So that's why I don't bother putting them in. And if I was going to go to that trouble of putting something in this slot, I would put a network card in. Because when you're running virtual machines and that, it's nice to have dual network support when doing that or video card actually I think the video card would go in this slot here actually I just wanted to, but you have to find one that fits small form factor and something that was compatible with this with this computer so would I buy something like this Back in the day, I probably would. Would I buy it, something like this now as my daily driver? In all honest opinion, knowing the, the quality of it, probably. If that's all that I could find or afford. So this is currently the, the specs of the computer currently what's in there. I do have Windows 10 Pro on this machine. Now we're going to focus on All right, this side is broken. Pull that guy out. 
so this is this is basically the specs of its, its quad core processor. You can do 32 gigs a minute. Yeah, that was right, 10600. You would use 10600 memory sticks. You don't want to mis mismatch them. You want to use all the same kind. Because the problem is if you mismatch them, and use different speeds and stuff for different brands, the computer r will run very unstable, and you could kill it with a matter of time. And what also will happen is... When you're booting and turning on and off, it sometimes it will come on, and sometimes it will. You just get a blank screen. So, my best recommendation is keep everything in check. So you do also have the option that back in the day when you bought this, that you can get trusted platform module. TPM security chip, and it also has a solenoid whole clock speaker. And I, actually, I'd never really tested that theory out, but maybe sometime if I ever do get around to it, I'll make a video on it. And then you also, actually, the type of memory is non ECC. Let's. Uh, Try to find interesting stuff here. So the infer interface type is a SATA 6 gig. Originally came with 250 gig drive, which I still think that's what's in there. No. I put 120 gig SSD. Storage controller. ATA. Integrated. This is, you could also upgrade this processor, but I have not found many forms about it. That literally went over that. That's just a network components, typical USB. Nothing that terribly important. You could actually buy this computer with Red Hat Linux Enterprise at the time, or SUS Linux Enterprise 11. Came preloaded with Office 10. It's integrated HD graphics to that two or 2000 dynamic video memory. You also have DisplayPort VGA. It is HD CP compatible. Have a three-year warranty. Typical. Okay, I was right. It had stereo. And it was max sampling rate was uh, 192 KHZ. My death. No. Okay. They don't talk about what slots. And actually... I got a 4.0 rating, or 4-star rating mostly. So actually, in all honesty, even back in the day, you could buy these with the i3, or you could buy them with Intel Pentium, or I believe in a, even a Celeron, or the Core 2 Dual. But honestly, I would stick with the i5. And we'll kind of put I'll put something to test here. Over my channel.
good evening, everybody, and welcome to a quick monitor overview here from Don Limited here. So tonight, we are going to talk about a 1.3 pan display monitor here. This is a HP L. So just to kind of give you an idea, that's how the video and it actually handles itself quite well. It doesn't get overloaded for just the HD graphics. I don't really have a lot of programs on on here, but when you're going through different menus and stuff like that. Little, Probably having four gigs of RAM in here, it handles itself quite well. But also also helps with the solid state drive being installed. It makes things a little snappier. We'll check the weather. I don't think it's very accurate, but oh, we're stuck in Washington D.C., but oh well. So. It does help with that. So, in all honesty, the opinions of this computer, there's not really too much to complain about. If anybody's got any questions on it, I'd be happy to answer them. So, thank you for watching. And I hope that you enjoyed this little last minute instance or, or um, spontaneous video that I had no idea that I was actually going to be doing today, but that's okay. It was kind of it's kind of fun to talk about something different. And, and actually, even in all honest opinion, if you played older games on here. You could probably get away with it if you had a decent small form factor graphics card. You could probably play some few interesting ones and stuff like that. So, thank you for watching as always. God bless everybody. Take care. Stay safe and all that. And we'll we'll see you very soon.